Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Um, so I finally bought one of these. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico. There's the front and there's the back. Raspberry Pi Pico is made by Raspberry Pi which is a British charity. They're actually based about 150 miles away. Uh, their purpose is to try to um, encourage people to dabble with IT and computer science, particularly younger people. They, they design boards and they give um, information basically to the public um, and they make it free or very cheap. This particular board costs £3.60, which in dollars is around about $4. It's very affordable. And it's actually a very powerful uh, little board too. Anyway, so what I found is that coming to use it, I couldn't find any really good, quick and easy videos on this platform. And therefore, I'm going to do it. So hopefully, within about 10 minutes, you will know the basics of Raspberry Pi, or the Pico. And hopefully, well no, definitely, you'll be able to uh, test it and do a very small bit of programming for it. You'll be able to make the the little onboard LED glow. Okay, so let's see what happens. So, this little Raspberry Pi, this little Pico, is non-ordinary Raspberry Pi. Now, the other Raspberry Pis that you may or may not be used to have a slightly different uh, aim, if you like. The old Raspberry Pis are like mini PCs. They're very small PCs, basically. They have an operating system, they have an SD card, they have a graphics output port, they have USBs. You know, you can connect a keyboard and mouse, you can, you can actually run them just as PCs. They had uh, some software on called Ubuntu, if I remember rightly. Or was it, or was it something else? I can't remember. But basically, they were, they were little PCs. Now, the Arduino, on the other hand, is a microcontroller. Now, again, you may or may not be familiar with that. If you're a subscriber on my channel, you probably are familiar with Arduino. But Arduino is a microcontroller. It doesn't have an operating system. It doesn't have a keyboard and mouse. It, doesn't, it isn't meant to be a PC. It's meant to be a very, very efficient and lightweight uh, controller, if you like. Generally speaking, it has a really simple task. And it's not really designed to have constant human interaction and stuff. It's the way it is. Now, the Pico is not a traditional Raspberry Pi, and it's not an Arduino either, but it is very similar to Arduino in the sense that um, it is a microcontroller. So the difference is that with the, with the Pico, which is here, the way you flash it is different, and the, the architecture of the way in which you flash it is different too. So with Arduino, you get the IDE and you, you basically flash it using the, uh, is it run or, or burn or something? I can't remember the exact term, but you click a button and it uploads. I think it's upload actually, and it flashes it to the Arduino. This also gets flashed, but when you plug it in to your PC, it, it comes up as a mass storage device, which is quite peculiar really. So on the mass storage device, you can add files to it or you can remove files. It's a, it's a file system, it's file system based. Now this, this thing can run P dot .py files and .uf2 files. So when you create a, a program, you can literally save the .py file or the .uf2 file to the file system of this and then this will run it. And alternatively, just like the Arduino here, you can do it via the, uh, the IDE. Now, like I said, it's not a traditional Raspberry Pi. It's more like an Arduino, only the flashing is different. When it comes to the spec, it has a very good spec. And I'll just show you here. If I go to, oh, I've got the pin out here. It's a very good spec. You can see that we have 
several UARTs, we have several I2C buses, we have several SPI buses, we have lots of GPIO, we have PIO, we have an ADC, which I don't know a great deal about. We have, um, I mean, in terms of, I don't know, the resolutions and stuff. We have SWD. Now, I won't be using this SWD. It's soft, uh, single wire debug. I won't be using it. I'll debug in the traditional way, the same as you would with an Arduino. Uh, so it has a lot going for it. Now, coming to spec, there's a spec here. So it features a dual core ARM um, Cortex M0 processor. So it's, it's, not, it's not a rubbish thing. It's, it's really powerful. So when it comes to flashing it, you've got several options. You've got a few different decisions to make. First of all, you need to know which language you're going to use. Now, which language do you want to use to start with? I mean, the, the Pico can allow two languages. It can allow the C or C++ style, or it can allow the MicroPython style. A lot of people who are familiar with Arduino are going to want to choose this one probably. People who are more familiar with Python and related stuff, old Raspberry Pis and stuff, probably going to want to use this one. And like I said, you could use both. It's not like Arduino where it's only one. Um, but there's a preferred one. And for this video, because of time and because I want it to be really, really simple, I'm going to recommend one. And I'm going to recommend MicroPython. And the reason being is that the Pico, the Pico here, has a sort of um, affinity with MicroPython. It's more friendly, it's more natural, it comes natural to it. With C and C++, you can use them, but it's just a little bit more work. But there's an affinity with MicroPython, and therefore this video is going to be based on that. Now the IDE, the IDE of course, is the development environment. And Visual Studio is a really good development environment. Vis Visual Studio Code is basically a lightweight version of Visual Studio, which is a professional programmer's tool. V VS Code, Visual Studio Code, is really, really, really good, but it's not designed specifically for Python, and sometimes that can have a drawback. So Visual Studio Code is very good, but it doesn't really specialise too much. Thony, on the other hand, is not really as good an IDE as Visual Studio Code, but it has a, um, well, how could I explain it? It's tweaked. Let's say it's tweaked towards, or tweaked for Raspberry Pi. And I'm gonna recommend Thony for this one because, again, it has like a slight affinity towards the Pico, whereas Visual Studio doesn't. So in a nutshell, um, Visual Studio Code is probably better, but for a beginner, for the purposes of making this really simple and easy, I would say go with Thony. Incidentally, Visual Studio Code can work with C and MicroPython, so if you're a little bit more advanced, maybe you'd want to go for Visual Studio Code. Anyway, MicroPython and Thony is what we're going to use in this video because it's the quickest, simplest and easiest. You can get Thony from here, thony.org. Um, I'm using Windows, so of course I'm going to download the Windows version. And as you can see, it's just a pretty simple, pretty straightforward IDE. You can also see that there is an affinity with Raspberry Pi. It says development of several features in Thony, blah, 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 were proposed and, and uh, supported. So go for that one if you're a beginner. Or if you want to get programming with uh, the Pico very quickly. When you've installed it, the next thing you'll need to do is go to Run and Select Interpreter. And when it says which interpreter or device, blah, 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 you need to choose, of course, MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. At this point, it might try to install something. It's not going to install it for me because I've already done it. Now, at this point here, you will need internet access. Uh, so, for example, if you were to just download and install Thony, and then you're going to go on with your laptop and... I don't know, go on a train or whatever, at this point you'd probably get stuck because I believe it needs internet access when you select the interpreter to install drivers or whatever. Okay, we're going to write some code. Now, if you to look online, 
and look at some libraries, what you'll find is that there's blink code. And this is blink code too. It's going to make the LED, the onboard LED blink on your Pico. But what you'll notice is that the online code is slightly more complicated. And the reason for that is because they use a non-blocking method. I'm going to use a blocking method though because it's easier and this is a getting started video so I don't want to add the com complexity. So if you're interested in blocking or non-blocking I'll probably put something about that in the description. But anyway, let's go through this super simple code. It says from machine, now machine is a library with um, various different modules in. From the machine library import the pin module. The pin module is going to help us with pin related tasks. Import time. Time is a module which helps us with time. Then we've got a variable called LED. So LED equals pin number 25, and we're using that pin as an output pin rather than an input pin. Because with the Pico, you could actually be reading data into it for all this, for all the compiler knows. Then we say, while true is true. Now, true is always true. And therefore, it's a little bit silly, but it means forever. So while forever, basically. While forever, get the LED pin and toggle it. So get the LED pin and toggle it. So if it's off, turn it on. If it's on, turn it off. Now in, in electronic uh, in electronic term, you're basically saying high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, low voltage. Anyway, after that, you're saying time dot sleep. Uh, 100 milliseconds. So time dot sleep. So time is a, of course, a, a module which deals with time, and sleep tells it to, of course, sleep. And this is the amount of seconds. So 0 0.1 seconds, which is 100 milliseconds. And then basically, it pause, it sleeps there, pauses, and then it repeats the the while loop again, which starts from here. The effect you should have is a blinking effect. Um, now we can actually change that to one or two, or whatever you want. But I've got it set to that, which is 100 milliseconds, so it should blink every 100 milliseconds. When you plug it in for the first time, hold that little white button down. See the white button there? Hold it down. Get your USB wire, and plug it in. Just like that. And it should come up as a mass storage device and it has on mine you see that to come up as a mass storage device so just before I said about about putting py files and uf2 files you could do it that way but I'm not going to okay so now click on run current script run current script and it asks you to install now I haven't quite worked out when it does this sometimes it does it all the time sometimes it does it the first time you plug it in I don't I'm not too sure but click install anyway it only takes about 10 seconds waiting for the port, done. Now what you should see is that it starts blinking. I've noticed once or twice it doesn't always do it and you have to take it out and, and plug it back in. I'm not sure why it does that, but mine is blinking right now. Um, yeah, so the thing is now, in fact, I'll just show you what it's doing. Just one second. So I don't know if you can see that, that it's blinking. Okay, now, so if I change this now to 1, it should blink every second, and now I won't need to reinstall that thing either, so if I just press run current script, you can see that it changes it, so I'll show you that again, you see it blinking slower now, now I'll show you another thing as well, where was this, it was somewhere about there, so I'll show you another thing. When you come to save it, you can go to save as, and it says this computer or Raspberry Pi. If you click this computer, basically it stores a copy on your computer. If you go to Raspberry Pi Pico, it saves it directly onto the Raspberry Pi Pico, and it becomes the uh, the script that's going to be run. Obviously, it says device busy at the moment, but um, you can actually do it that way. Now, the other thing is you can read from the Raspberry Pi as well. So if I click stop here, I'll go to open, I can actually read it from the Raspberry Pi, you see? Main.py and I can open it and there it is. And I think that's really, really good. I think that's really good. Um, 
so there you go, uh, that's the programming done. Now that's the quickest and easiest way that I think you can get started with the Raspberry Pi Pico. So hopefully that works for you and I hope you enjoy it.